Hi, Dr. Kat Fleece here from Central New Mexico Community College, and we will continue our discussion of the integumentary system with video B, in which we will focus on the cells that make up the um, epidermis. So here you see the four cells listed that are found in the epidermis. Now perhaps you go, wait a minute, I thought that the epidermis was made up of stratified squamous epithelial tissue, and that is indeed the case. But the squamous cells are actually very specialized in making something called keratin, and so therefore our squamous cells we call keratinocytes. All right, so these are the squamous cells in our um, hardened skin, in our hardened epidermal layer of the skin. And the reason why we have that hardened layer is because these keratinocytes produce a protein that is called keratin. Try not to confuse this with carotene. We'll talk about carotene later, but notice the that you can see the root carrots in carotene, so it has actually to do with carrots, as we'll see. So these list, these I'm sorry, these cells are listed pretty much in order of abundance, with certainly the keratinocytes being the most abundant, followed by the melanocytes, and of course, as the name says, the melanocytes they secrete melanin, which is yet another protein that is also a pigment, so it's a colored protein, so we can call it a protein pigment. And then there are some immune cells that are crawling around in our skin, skin going after pathogens called Langerhans cells. For those of you who have had microbiology, they're actually a type of dendritic cell, um, which are kind of sort of similar to macrophages, but uh, not exactly. And then finally, some of the cells in the epidermis are modified to communicate with touch sensory receptors. And so we'll see how that works. So these are touch sensory receptors. And when they work together with the nervous system, they then form these little structures we call Merkel discs. So let's take a look at all these cells on a figure. So what you're looking at here is from the top to where it turns pink, all of that is epidermis. So I'll give it the letter E or the letters EP to specify that that is the epidermis. And how about we use a different color and put the letter D in there to indicate where the dermis starts. So clearly the epidermis is very cellular and most of the cells that you see here, all of these yellow cells all the way to the apical surface, so from the basal surface to the apical surface, almost all of those are keratinocytes. Those are your squamous epithelial cells that are the most common that produce that hardening protein called keratin. Now there's another interesting thing to point out, and that is that especially <coughs> noticeable closer to the basal layer um, are the, that the cells, the keratinocytes, are interconnected via desmosomes. Remember these are little membrane junctions that act kind of like zippers. So, for instance, these two cell membranes of these two cells are zipped together as are t these two cell membranes and these two cell membranes. And this is what explains why when you have had a sunburn in a, on your back, let's say, that you tend to peel off in sheets. Or even if you've had a little sunburn, you really uh, start to flake off your skin. And of course, if you were to put that under a microscope, that would be many, many cells together and that's because of these desmosomes. These desmosomes also therefore have a, an impact on what our cells look like. Uh, notice that the cells right here in this layer, and we'll see this better in, in another slide, have kind of pointy corners to them, uh, unlike the cells in the other layers which are more smooth in appearance. 
The second most abundant cells, but nothing compared to the keratinocytes though, are the melanocytes. And the melanocytes produce a very important protective protein pigment that we call melanin. And of course, melanin is not just going to give our skin its color, and we produce more melanin when we're exposed to the UV rays of the sun, uh, but we also have keratin in our hair, and keratin in our eyes, for instance. So depending on how much keratin is deposited, we have different colored structures. Now these melanocytes have, um, well, first of all, they're primarily found uh, near and in the basal layer. So for instance, right here, we see one of these melanocytes and it has a very typical appearance. It has a, a cell body with then all of these long arms that sort of snake in between our keratinocytes. And notice all the little black dots inside of these arms. <clears throat> well, these are, <clears throat> excuse me, little um, melanin granules that we'll refer to uh, as melanosomes. And these melanosomes, um, they travel up these arms of our melanocytes. And then the keratinocytes receive little portions of these melanosomes, as you can see. And typically, the way these melanosomes will then position themselves, or actually I should say the actual melanin proteins, the way they will position themselves is such that the nuclei of all of these keratinocytes are nicely protected from the sun rays. So um, often when I draw this, and, and maybe I should just do this for you guys real quick, let's say that right here we have a keratinocyte with its nucleus, and let's say that the sun is shining from up here typically, then you would expect, these are sun rays you guys, <laughs> uh, then you would expect that most of these um, little melanin protein granules are going to deposit themselves like such, um, such that we protect that nucleus the most. Remember that UV radiation from the sun or any UV radiation is actually a mutagen. In other words, <clears throat> it can mutate our DNA, which is why we can so easily get skin cancer from too much exposure, exposure to the UV rays of the sun. And not to go into the detailed biochemical reactions, but these melanosomes and the melanin in them can literally protect our, the DNA from these biochemical changes that can be triggered by exposure to UV rays. And by the way, I forgot to mention almost, the keratinocytes, they manage to receive these melanocytes by means of endocytosis. If you have forgotten what that means, be sure you look it up because you'll need to know the terms endocytosis and definitely exocytosis for future lectures, so please do. Our third cell type is the Langerhans cell and we see a slide here illustrating the epidermis in the double-headed arrow here with many dark specks which supposedly represent our Langerhans cells. Notice that there's probably some more in the dermis as well. These can wander around and they act as like, very much like macrophages even though they are considered the dendritic cells. They're not really um, macrophages but they are similar in macrophages in that they also um, go through phagocytosis to digest their pathogens and they can then, as after they've digested the pathogen, literally allow for little proteins to s that, are, that are part of the pathogen to stick out from um, their cell membranes and then function as antigen presenting cells with antigens being little chunks of proteins that belong to, to the path pathogen. Our last cell is called the Merkel cell. Now our Merkel cell, which you see illustrated here in the bright blue, again is mostly found in that basal layer. By the way, here we see our melanocyte with its long arms, right? 
the rest of these yellow ones are all um, keratinocytes and we don't have any Langerhans showing on this particular diagram. But if we come back to our Merkel cell right here, it again sits in that basal layer, <clears throat> but it sits in very close proximity to the beginning of a sensory neuron, this right here. So we have the Merkel cell plus the sensory neuron and that forms our Merkel disc. All right. <clears throat> and the Merkel disc, so this little complex, it functions actually as a touch receptor, a light touch receptor. So how does this really work? Well, without going into any details, because for that we need to have some background in neurophysiology, which we'll get to later, but let's say that um, your, your shirt is rubbing against your skin, or um, maybe your dog is putting his paw gently on your arm, like my dog is doing right now, then um, an electrical signal is created, and as promised, we will learn more about that later. And I'll illustrate that electrical signal by a little lightning bolt here. That electrical signal that is created due to this touch will then travel up the sensory neuron to go to the CNS. And the CNS, of course, is our brain and our spinal cord. So remember the name, sensory neuron. It senses the environment. So that tells you that the electrical signal will start somewhere in the body and then go into the central nervous system. So your brain and your spinal cord can then interpret that electrical signal and create a response to it. So Merkel discs, we're going to come back to as we study the nervous system and learn more about sensory receptors. We have many, many, many different sensory receptors. Think, for instance, about your photoreceptors in your eyes, your hearing receptors in your ears, etc. So this wraps up our discussion of the different cell types found in the epidermis. Now we need to take a look at those different sublayers that we call strata in the epidermis, and then we'll take a closer look at the dermis.